There is new evidence of benefit in treating pulmonary hypertension associated with lung disease. And I talk specifically about the increased study, which was in haltroprosinol in patients with group 3 pH. Here we have the design of the increased study. This was a randomized control study with a one-to-one -one randomization. This was the biggest study to date in group 3 pulmonary hypertension. The same number of patients in each arm, 163, either randomized to inhaled troprostanol or to placebo. The goal was to get the patients up to about 9 to 12, between 9 and 12 breaths four times a day. And this was a 16-week study. The primary endpoint was the six-minute walk distance at week 16. This slide shows the baseline demographics of the two groups, showing that they were well-matched. The age was 65 to, through 67, a little bit of a difference in terms of gender distribution between the two arms. The etiology of the pulmonary hypertension is shown over here with idiopathic interstitial pneumonias being the main indication. We had patients with combined pulmonary fibrosis and emphysema, connective tissue disease, chronic hypersensitivity, and occupational lung disease. There were, there were very few. Suffice it to say that they were, the groups were very well matched in terms of the underlying etiology. This was a sick group of patients. Most of them were on oxygen, 73% versus 70%. And some of them were on background antifibrotic therapy. And these were mostly the patients who came in with IPF. So IPF was the main disease under the idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. Moving on to the results, as I mentioned, the primary endpoint was the six-minute walk distance. As you can see quite clearly from this, there was a significant difference favoring the treatment arm in terms of the six-minute walk distance at 16 weeks. That was the peak six-minute walk distance, so done about one hour after their usually their morning inhalation of the inhaled troposinol. Depending on which statistical methodology you, uh, that was used, the difference was either 30 meters or 21 meters. This one looks like it's closer to 30 meters in terms of placebo corrected difference. And it appears that about two thirds of this difference was driven by an improvement in the treatment arm versus a decrement in the placebo arm. This is the mixed model repeated measurement statistical methodology looking at the six minute walk difference at 16 weeks showing a 21 meter difference. Nonetheless, this was still uh, statistically significant. A secondary endpoint was to look at the six-minute walk distance at 12 weeks, which was also positive at 20 weeks, as well as a trop six-minute walk distance at week 15. In other words, when the inhaled troprostanol had washed out about an hour or so prior to the patient's next dose, they were walked. And this was also positive in terms of the difference shown here at 15 meters, even the patients were seeing the lowest dose of the drug namely at the time of, of, of a trough in the inhaled troprostanol. There are other secondary endpoints that were met. This is our biomarker, the NT-Pro BMP. This can be a little bit of a difficult slide to, to look at, but I'll, I'll walk you through it in terms of the inhaled troprostanol group. They started at baseline at 550. The bar graph shows the interquartile range. And as you can see, the, these patients went from 550 to 485 to 454 at the end of the study. So a serial decrement in the NT pro BMP versus the placebo arm who actually started lower at 420, went up to 528 and 590 towards the end of the study. So it's always very nice when you have a positive clinical outcome, namely the six minute walk distance. And this is verified and validated by our biomark measurement, which also moved in the right direction. This is a forest plot looking at different subgroups from the increased study. And everything is to the right of the line of unity. So there was no particular group that had more of a benefit or less than a benefit. We can run through some of these that might be important. It makes intuitive sense that those patients who walked less had a more robust response. Those patients with a lower DLCO had a more robust response, perhaps more pulmonary hypertension in these patients. And that's seen also here in the PVR subgroup analysis, where the patients with a PVR greater than forward units had a more robust response. What's also very nice to see from this is a dose response effect, namely those patients who are only able to get to between four and six breaths four times a day, didn't do as well as those who went to seven to nine. And the group that did the best were those who achieved the targeted dose of 10 to 12 breaths four times a day. Another important secondary endpoint was time to clinical worsening. And once again, this was positive. Patients had re a reduced time to clinical worsening for the group on inhaled troprostanol. So another measure 
showing efficacy of inhaled triprostanol. This summarizes some of the secondary endpoints as well as exploratory endpoints I mentioned and showed already improvements in the NT pro BMP, reduction in time to clinical worsening, improvements in the peak six minute walk distance at week 12, as well as improvements in the trough six minute walk distance at week 15. There was no significant difference in patient reported outcomes, specifically the St. George's Respiratory Questionnaire or the distance saturation product, product at week 16. So, in conclusion, Pulmonary hypertension frequently complicates the course of patients with interstitial lung disease. In the increased study, patients treated with inhaled triprostanol experienced significant improvements in their six-minute walk distance. Inhaled triprostanol was also associated with reductions in the risk of a clinical worsening event, reductions in the nt pro -BMP, and reduction in exacerbations of the underlying lung disease over the 16-week treatment period. The safety profile of inhaled triprostanol was similar to that reported in previous studies, with the most frequently occurring adverse events being cough, headache, dyspnea, dizziness, nausea, fatigue, and diarrhea. Thank you all very much.